Hey friends, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about cracks. Cracks are a potter's worst nightmare, but we all sort of have to deal with them from time to time. So you can get a better idea of like what causes particular types of cracks. So you can kind of differentiate between different types of cracks. And so you can figure out how to make your pottery without them. Let's just uh, get into it. Um, I've got my notes and I also got a bunch of samples here to show you. Um, I basically went through the studio and grabbed uh, samples of any sort of piece that I saw had cracking in it. So we got a variety of cracks <laughs> to look at today. Before we get started today, I want to uh, mention that Although I'm definitely going to be talking about my own experiences here, a lot of this information comes from this fabulous book called The Potter's Dictionary of Materials and Techniques by Janet and Frank Hammer. Uh, this book was written in like the 70s or something, so it's old, but it's like a total Bible for potters. And you definitely want to check that out if you want to go into more depth on these topics. So the root of all cracks is stress stress on the clay body or stress on the materials that you're using because they can also be caused by glaze too. The whole process of making pottery puts the clay on stress. Like clay doesn't want to become a piece of ceramic. So when the stress on the clay is too much for the material itself to handle, that's when cracks appear. So first I want to give you sort of an overview of like what might cause your cracks. And then we're going to go into the different uh, types of cracks. So you can say, oh, I know what type of crack this is. I'm going to diagnose it. And so you know like how to fix your cracks. Um, but the first list that I want to give you of things that cause your cracks are firing your clay at too high of a temperature or too long or firing multiple times, drying your pottery too fast or drying your pottery unevenly, cooling the pottery too fast, like after it's coming out of the kiln. Don't forget about the concept of thermal shock and how when materials are heated up, they expand and when they're cooled down, they contract. So this means don't open your kiln too soon because they'll cool too fast. So I never open the kiln before 100 degrees Celsius. Um, and this is mostly because I have uh, a lot of student work and beginner pottery in my kilns. And you can, you know, uh, open your kiln a bit higher uh, if you think your pottery can withstand the stress of that shock. Um, lots of potters do that. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to put the minimum amount of stress on your pots, wait until it gets to 100 degrees Celsius before you open your kiln. Okay, back to the list. Variations in the thickness of your pot. So if your bottom is really, really thick and your wall is very thin, this can also cause cracks. And then glazing stress. So glazing does also put a lot of uh, stress on your pot because glaze actually pulls on the clay, like it shrinks. You also need to understand that clays and glazes are meant to fit together um, because both of them are shrinking, right? Clay's shrinking, the glaze is shrinking and they need to shrink at a similar time, at a similar rate, and a similar shrinkage, right? So this list here is just like an overview of all the different things that can cause cracks. Now I want to go into the different types of cracks and what can be causing them so you can sort of diagnose your own problems. Now I won't be covering every single type of crack um, because there's just like an endless amount. Um, if you wanna get into this, check out that book that I mentioned earlier. I'll link it down in the description below. So I'm sort of compressing what I read in that book and I sort of picked the ones that I see like really often among beginner potters. So hopefully you'll find your most common crack in here. If not, definitely refer to that book or reach out in the comments and I can uh, have a private conversation with you about it. So the first crack I want to talk about is the vertical crack. Um, you can see the diagram right Right here how it should look. So there's a few different things that can cause this crack. Um, the one I see most often is stemming from the way it was made. Um, this especially happens in hand building. So uh, how it was made basically led to a weak point in the pottery. So for example, you're rolling out a slab and for some reason, like you're not using your thickness gauges and there's one part of the slab that's too thin that can crack there. Or if you rolled your slab and you like bent it and then you put it down and you bent it and you put it down, like all of that, like putting that on a hinge there, that can weaken the clay as well. Um, so if you're getting this type of crack, definitely look into how you're making your pottery and make sure that you're not overly working the pottery or working with it when it's too dried out. 
Another thing that can cause this is if you dry out your pottery unevenly or too fast. Like what often happens if, is if the rim dries much faster than the bottom, the rim will shrink and the bottom will stay the same, um, which causes cracks along these lines. It can like cause like a fault line between the two. What can cause the rim to shrink faster than the bottom is if the bottom is super thick, the thicker the clay is, the more it holds water. Or if you forget to flip over your pots um, during the drying process. This can cause a disparity between rim and bottom. Uh, it can also be a problem with the clay itself. So if you're using reclaimed clay, and especially this is the case if you're on the wheel um, and you see that it start, it's starting to split, this means that your clay is too short. The word for it is too short. Basically that means you've removed all of the thin particles from the clay and all that's left are the thick particles. And the thin particles sort of like act like glue to keep the clay together. Um, so when you're reclaiming your clay, you definitely want to always be saving your throwing slip um, in order to reintegrate that back into your trimmings and the other hard stuff um, so that you can keep your uh, clay pliable and not too short. One last thing that uh, could happen is if you're applying like an end gobe or something and you just apply it to one part, when you're applying an end gobe or an underglaze, remember you're adding water to that part. And if you do it on one part and not the rest, or if you do it like when the pot is too dry or too <laughs> wet, or um, you just like slap it on and you don't, uh, you know, spread it out and let it dry evenly, um, this can also cause these types of cracks. Okay, crack number two. This is the shattered bottom and I do have an example. Yeah, so this is the best example though. You can only see it on the inside. Magically, it didn't crack all the way through and that's partly because this pot is so dang heavy. So what can cause this? Um, if the base is too thin or wet or dry too quickly. <laughs> um, right, so this is probably the one I see the most. Um, make sure your base is about as even as your walls are. So in this case, the base is too thick, but um, it can definitely happen if the base is too thin too. And the most common thing that I see that causes this is people who forget to remove the water from the bottom of their pots um, when they're taking them off the wheel. So when you're throwing on the wheel, one of the last things that you wanna do is just remove all the water from the bottom of your pot. It starts to accumulate there on the bottom um, and it can definitely like soak in to the clay and just cause all sorts of problems. It also causes S cracks, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, so make sure everything is drying evenly, basically. Oh, right, and then also this happens, I've seen this quite a few times as well, if the glaze is just too thick on the bottom. So the glaze is just like, you know, doing its all its thing, you know, transforming and shrinking and all of its thing. Um, and it just puts way too much stress on the clay. Um, if you, you know, pour glaze in and then wait five minutes before you pour it out, probably the glaze is going to be too thick on the bottom and you can get a crack like this. Okay, the infamous S crack. So this is going to be the most common in pottery, in thrown pottery. This is what is this, this is a very extreme example of an S crack. Yeah, this is mostly talked about in wheel thrown pottery, although it can happen in hand built pottery too. Although in that it's usually more of a straight line than uh, it is on the wheel. So the, on the wheel it's more of an S shape. And it's not like exactly an S, but it should be like a little wiggly. So from my experience, S cracks come 99% of the time from uneven drying. So again, removing the water from the bottom of your pot after you've thrown it, and always, always you wanna flip your pot as soon as it's strong enough to support itself, you wanna flip it over um, to let that bottom dry out. If you leave your pot like on a bat or something and you never flip it until it becomes leather hard, you are probably gonna be dealing with S cracks fairly often. I mean, of course it depends on the clay you're using. If you're not sure, definitely flip your clay. If you're using a uh, grogless clay like I am, definitely flip. Um, okay, so I wanna talk briefly about compressing the bottom. Um, this is something that there's a lot of debate about. I get the impression that this is a much more uh, important topic in North America than it is over here, um, because I really only hear of North American potters talking about compressing the bottom. Um, and a lot of people swear by it. And in fact, this book, in fact, I'm gonna show this diagram right now that explain, like that's from this book that explains why compressing the bottom is so important. Um, I have never really focused on compressing the bottom and I've not really heard of people over here, you know, focusing too much on it. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just like in my bubble, but um, 
I don't do it and it doesn't cause problems. Um, and I've heard a handful of people saying it's all a myth. Um, so I'm sure it depends on your clay. Like maybe an American clay is like so much more prone to S cracks than it is. I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is a lot of people tell you to compress the bottom. I can speak from my own experience that I don't. What I do is I'll smooth the bottom like once over with my finger, but a lot of people are like spending like a minute, like going back and forth, making sure that bottom's compressed. And I've just, just never done that. I've never had an issue. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that like, if you're suffering from S cracks, I would suggest that you check your drying first, making sure that's all good, making sure that the bottom is the same thickness as the walls. And if none of that works, try compressing and maybe it's gonna work for you. Who knows? <laughs> okay, so the next crack, I couldn't figure out a name for, so I'm just gonna call it what they call it in the book, is the I crack, the J crack, and the L crack. I just grouped them all together. They're all tiny bit different, but they're basically all the same. So these types of cracks are from thermal shock, but the actual reason is because you have a difference in wall thickness between the walls and the base of your pot. Here is something that you can definitely see. So. This is totally flat and yet this is so raised. So this bottom is probably and its thinnest centimeter, probably two, a centimeter and a half. And the walls are about a half centimeter thick. Um, so this is a pretty extreme example. And what causes this is like, even if you let your kiln cool slowly and you don't open it till a hundred degrees, the surface that like the kiln shelf that your pot is sitting on is still gonna retain a lot of heat. And so this thick ass bottom here is still gonna be quite hot. Whereas the rest of your pot is not going to be as hot anymore. And this is just like gonna cause the crack, right? Because of thermal expansion, right? Um, so that's really it. I mean, it's the same on this one. This is just like a super thick base, super thin walls. Um, yeah, if you're getting these cracks that are just like around the edges, that's because uh, the base is too thick. Ah, end crack, okay. So this one I've seen a lot in my dear friend who um, likes to glaze only on the inside of her pots. And uh, yeah, this is basically a fitting issue between the glaze and the pot. So imagine that this pot is glazed only on the inside. The glaze is going to be pulling at the walls of the pot. It's gonna like wanna shrink the walls with it. Um, and if your walls aren't sufficiently strong, as in like thick and well-made, um, they could easily shatter inward, like be pulled in and have the shattering effect. So um, if you only want to glaze the inside, you can definitely do that. Just make sure that your walls are well-made and like a little bit thicker, like don't make them super fine and super thin. You're just gonna end up with troubles. <laughs> and one more thing about that is, um, you can also try a different glaze too. Like maybe that glaze is just not fitting very well um, to the body of your pot. So it could also be that. Yeah, shivering. Shivering is a really easy one. Um, this is just a bad bond between the clay body and the glaze. Um, so I see this most often when people are not correctly using end gobes. Um, because the end gobe will create a barrier between the glaze and the clay, and then it will just fall off. You can also cause this to happen if you like way over sponge your clay. And just like with um, the short clay, uh, you're gonna be removing all of those fine particles and the glaze has less that it can like grab onto. Um, so yeah, it can also cause the glaze to fall off. Yeah, and the next one is kind of a fun one um, because this can either be good or bad, depending on your perspective, the crackle. I don't have any examples here, but um, when it's bad, it's called crazing. Um, when it's good, it's called crackle or crackle glaze, crackerel, crack, crack, I don't know. There's a few different words for it. Um, yeah, it's all of these like hairline fractures in the glaze. So this is caused again by a bad fit of the glaze body to the clay. So imagine that the glaze is trying to shrink, but this is trying to stay firm. And so it's just like pulling and pulling and pulling at the clay. And the only way to relieve the tension is to just crack. And then, you know, it will make all these like hairline fractures. It can look super beautiful. Um, unfortunately, it usually makes it not food safe. So if you're going to be going for this crackle effect, I recommend doing only the outside of tableware or doing sculpture 
or anything that you're not, you know, touching food, that's also fine. Okay, the last one I want to talk about is a uh, glaze fault that is near and dear to my heart. And I'm actually really shocked that I don't have any examples for you today because this is something that, um, I used to deal with a lot. It's called springing. And this is when your handle doesn't attach to the body of your pot. So in this crack, the fault is always within the making. Sometimes it doesn't come out until the glaze fire or the bisque wire, but it's always originated in the making. You probably just didn't see it yet or it was just too fine of a crack that it wasn't visible, uh, but it was always in there. So this is just the joint was not well joined, right? So the body of your pot was too, uh, either too wet or too dry. Um, or you didn't slip and score properly, or uh, what else could happen? Or yeah, they just dried at different rates. This is why I always, always recommend after you've attached a handle or any sort of joinery to wrap it in plastic for 24 hours, let the water level equalize before you let it dry out completely. This will really help with issues like springing. In fact, uh, this is really what saved me. Like this is why I'm so intense about always wrapping it in plastic after, uh, attaching a joinery because I used to have this problem all the time and it was just really depressing. <laughs> um, yeah, and the book also mentions that this can happen if you're using two different clay bodies. So if you're using like a white, you know, without grog and a red with grog or something, yeah, probably you're gonna get springing too. Not to say that you can't do that, but um, it's definitely a lot more likely to crack between and the line between two clay bodies because they just shrink differently. Okay, wow, that is, all of the um, cracks that I wanted to talk about today. Yeah, these are the ones I see most often in my studio. Of course, there's like so many more types of cracking that happens. I just saw a new crack recently um, from a member who was stacking her bowls, her bone dry bowls, like inside of each other. Um, but instead of them resting like inside on the bottom, they were kind of pushing up on the edge and so, it just put too stress on the edge of the bottom one. And yeah, it just caused a crack. Yeah, cracks, <laughs> super fun. Uh, love to deal with them. <laughs> um, but hopefully this video helps you to prevent cracks or to diagnose the cracks that are happening in your clay. Um, yeah, it can, it can be kind of tricky to deal with, but I can say like, I rarely have to deal with them anymore because I have like a really good system that uh, prevents it from happening. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, if you want to hear more from me and my studio, you can find me over on Instagram at Pottery to the People. Uh, otherwise, I wish you all a great day. Bye, friends.